Hello, Pokemon Masters! My name is Berkey Patobi and I make videos on the internet about Pokemon. Strange creatures that evolve when they grow. Except, this isn't how evolution works in the real world. I think there's some explaining to do here. Welcome to Evolution 101. How evolution works, and how it does not. So, evolution is not an event, nor is it a level up, nor is it a banana. I don't know why you'd think it would be a banana, but if you know what you know about evolution through Pokemon, then scrap what you know, because Pokemon is wrong. When a Caterpie, for example, evolves into a Metapod at level 7, and then again a Butterfree at level 10, it's not actually evolving in the same way animals do. Instead, what it's going through is more akin to a metamorphosis, and while all Pokemon evolve this way, Caterpie is a good example, because Caterpillars in the real world do go through metamorphosis, the rapid changing of an animal over a small amount of time. This is also common in tadpoles, frogs, and even in some jellyfish. So, now you know what evolution is not, what is it? As I've said earlier, it's not a level up, or an event, or a banana. It's not a process that's gonna happen overnight. I'm not gonna wake up tomorrow with wings, or claws, or flippers, or sadly a stronger jawline. Instead, evolution is more of an ongoing process that happens as we reproduce. I promise I'll get back to that in a minute, but for now, I'm gonna take a look at this Lapras and this Squirtle. Both these Pokemon have blue scales, hard shells, and beaks designed for snapping. And looking at traits like this is important, you might also find them on fossils found in the ocean floor, and if those fossils are in areas where Squirtle and Lapras may have once lived in the past, then this could be what's called a common ancestor. So what is a common ancestor? Well, I can tell you, it's not a banana. Where do these keep coming from? Sorry! A common ancestor is the answer to one of the most common misconceptions about evolution, which is that we did not evolve from modern day monkeys. And that's because if you look at primate fossils going back over millions of years, and I mean millions of years, you start to paint a picture of humans and monkeys and then, ooh, there's the point where we have our common ancestor. A creature that is neither, but the ancestor to both. Let's take a look at our Lapras and Squirtle, for example, and the common ancestor, which is a fossil of a Pokemon known as Tirtuga. Tirtuga lived in the oceans millions of years ago when Lapras and Squirtle did not exist. It swam in schools. But let's say one school of Tirtuga migrated to shallower waters, maybe to try and find food. But sadly, they couldn't just snap at the food, they had to learn how to pick it up. Well, they all have flippers. So sadly, many of them will starve. But what's this? One of them seems to have a kind of nub on its flipper. And this nub is allowing it to grab the food around the riverbeds, and so it eats it and survives, and is more likely to reproduce. The genes that make up the nub on that flipper have proved advantageous to that Pokemon's survival, and so it's more likely to reproduce and pass that gene on. See, we normally think of our genes as being 50-50 of our parents, but actually, it, that's not true at all. Every baby is born with random gene mutations, some of which you may never notice. But others of them can be things like both parents having blue eyes, but a baby having brown eyes, or even being born with an additional finger. These things happen. And even sadly, offspring being born with diseases that the parents never had. This kind of gene mutation is not advantageous, presumably, for the creature's survival, so normally those gene mutations don't stay in the gene pool for very long. Let's get back to Pokemon. So, going back to our tier 2 gut, it's been born with this gene mutation that gives it a nub on its flipper. Over time, those with bigger nubs, which appear more like fingers on the flipper, will be more successful at finding food, eating it, and reproducing. And so, after many millions and millions and millions of years and many gene mutations, some proving beneficial and some that are just there for the ride, you end up with a Pokemon that isn't tier 2 gut anymore, but is more like Squirtle. Now let's check on a school of Tirtuga that may have remained in the sea. Well, would you look at that? Those with bigger flippers that could swim further, faster, and easier, and longer necks for catching their prey have bred more successfully, and over millions and millions of years, they've now become the Pokemon we know as Lapras. The passing on of beneficial genes and the dying out of those that can't keep up is called natural selection. And this is what evolution looks like. So hopefully you've learned something today, whether it's about evolution or Pokemon, I don't really mind, but let me know what Pokemon you think share common ancestors in the comments, and subscribe to me on youtube.com forward slash Toby. I'm gonna enjoy this banana, and you saw hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Birdkeeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. will be reaching Ash's head at a velocity of roughly 8.47 meters per second. 
This is the typical speed of a falling raindrop. Just imagine you're being hit by a raindrop that is as hard as steel.